Welcome to another example from chapter 6 using centripetal acceleration. So we have a pickup truck and a person standing in the back on a flat scale. So this person is 70 kilograms in mass and the truck is going over a hill that has a radius of 60 meters and a speed, forward speed, of 20 meters per second. So we can put all this into our picture um, and that works perfectly fine. I tend to like the organization of making a list of the given information, but whatever works for you. So we have M, we have V in that first sentence, and we have R also in that first sentence. So we're asking to find the force of the scale on the person. So first of all, let's think about the free body diagram. And what's really important for us to recognize is that the scale is what the person is standing on and is providing a normal force. So for this person, all they have acting on them is gravity down. So gravity is mg. 70 times 9.8, which is equal to 686 newtons. And then the normal force up is the scale. Now, this is extremely important. If the truck were not moving at all and just parked at the top of this hill, then gravity and normal force could match each other. However, we are going around a circular type motion, and even though this speed is constant, the velocity is constantly changing, which means there has to be an acceleration, and that acceleration is centripetal acceleration pointing towards the center of the circle, which means that scale is absolutely not reading 686 newtons, it is reading a different number value because there is a net force pointing down. So when we look at that F net Y, so it's Y because it's a vertical circle here. So F net in the Y direction is equal to mass times centripetal acceleration because we have a circular motion problem here. As with all of the cases we will see all throughout chapter 4, 5, and 6, we want to take the forces in the direction of acceleration, which in this case is gravity, minus the forces opposite the direction of acceleration, which in this case is the normal force. And then that is equal to m times a. And in this case, we can use the acceleration can either be v squared over r, or it can be r omega squared. We've seen one use of each of these so far. We have velocity, so we should use the one that's easier for us that already has velocity in it. So 686 minus the unknown normal force that we're solving for, because that's the scale. And now we can plug in the rest of our numbers. 70 on top, we have 20 squared over 60. We're gonna add the normal force to both sides. So let's see what we have so far. 686 equals 467 plus F normal minus 467 on both sides. And we end up with 219. 220 is also fine. 219 is equal to that normal force, which is what the scale is going to read. Now it is worth us making sure we understand if that makes sense to us or not. If we ever remember being in a car, and we don't need to be in the back of a pickup truck standing on a scale, but if we've ever been in a car that has gone kind of quickly over the top of a circular hill, we almost feel lifted out of our seats. And if we've gone a little too fast, whether on purpose or not, we almost feel like we've lifted completely out of our seats. That's when the normal force might even go to zero, which is possible here. We absolutely should expect that this number is smaller than our true weight, we feel lighter, 
And that's because that normal force, which is the surfaces around us acting on our bodies, that normal force is smaller as we're going over the top of a hill. So the next time that you're driving around, either as a driver or a passenger, notice if you're driving very quickly, especially on a really hilly road, that you'll feel lighter when you're going over the top of a hill, and you will feel heavier with, when you're going through the bottom of a valley in that hilly road. We talk a little bit about both in the lecture videos, and this is a chance for us to see the number values attached to that idea. Now, I made a note in example 6b that we should make a list, um, so an Fnet list for chapter um, 6, and then I didn't have a chance to have any space on the previous example video. So what I want to note here is all of the different forces that are contributing to circular motion. Example 6b, it was tension all by itself. In example 6c, the one right before this, part A, it was tension minus gravity. In part B, it was tension plus gravity. Here in this example, if we continue our list, we have gravity minus the normal force is the net force that is going into circular motion. What I want us to recognize in each case is that the forces involved in each of our examples presented in lecture is a slightly different combination of the common forces that we've seen throughout chapters 4 and 5. There is no brand new separate centripetal force, and even, the, even though the textbook likes to use that term, we really want to make sure we understand that it is not a separate force that is going into any kind of free body diagram or force diagram. It is simply a description of the fact that the forces will add up with the idea of vectors in mind. They will add up to mass times centripetal acceleration. So make sure that you continue this list as we go, even if I don't have a chance to specifically call, call it out. We want to think about what were the forces that went into our description of Fnet. That's our goal, is to kind of make a list of all the different possibilities and recognize that none of them are called centripetal force. And none of them are brand new, weird, different forces. It's all the same stuff we've been seeing in the previous two chapters. All right, I will see you in the next example videos.